Hey everyone, it is still December. Welcome to part two to the Intel Overdrive MMX processor upgrade video, I guess. Uh, I guess technically the first one was more of an unboxing. The second part's going to be actually installing it. And if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I ran the Intel diagnostic utility and it says that it should be compatible. I don't need a BIOS update or anything, so that's a good sign because it's really difficult to find a BIOS upgrade for this. NEC shut down their FTP servers a few years back. I've got a copy of it the entire FTP directory, at least what was available on archive.org. But the files aren't named like NEC Ready 7610, latest BIOS.exe or anything like that. And so it's kind of difficult to find it. So I'm glad that I don't necessarily need it. Now, the warning did pop up saying, hey, you know, this isn't all encompassing. You may still run into issues, etc. But I think we're going to be okay with it. So I did go ahead and rerun some benchmarks. I'll show those on screen now as I'm talking and then we'll talk the numbers real quick and then we'll get into the actual nitty gritty of this so all right and now it's time to talk benchmarks so we'll go over the quote unquote stock configuration first and then after we do the upgrade we'll rerun the benchmarks and we'll see what kind of improvements if any are there so the vga benchmark is 110.4 chris's benchmark is 27.8 frames per second PC player, 14.2. Doom at max settings ended up with 1288 real ticks, which equates to about 57.9 frames per second. Quake at max settings, basically 640 by 480. I'm getting 10.3 frames per second. Moving on to more technical benchmarks. If we run SpeedSys, L1 is giving me 227.65 megabytes per second. L2 is giving me 95.41 megabytes per second, and the overall memory throughput is 58.55 megabytes per second. All right, those were the benchmarks pre-upgrade. Go ahead and get this guy installed, and then we'll rerun the benchmarks. So I went ahead and uh, took the uh, case off because it is a pain in the butt, especially on these uh, older systems where the entire case cover encompasses the entire case instead of just a side panel. But if we look right over here, that's where the CPU is. I'm going to remove the Sound Blaster card just to have easier access to it, but I'm pretty sure we won't have to take the motherboard out at all to uh, replace it or anything. I may take the cache stick out. I'm not sure. I don't think I'm going to need to. And now it should be a heck of a lot easier to get to that CPU over here. So let me get this on its side and we'll continue. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to get the entire process on camera. I'm not sure how easy it will be with the camera in the way. Hoping that I'll be able to get at least most of it. But we'll see. So all I have to do is remove the existing heatsink as well as the CPU. Now I got to remember how I did this last time. I'm going to need a flathead blade. Let's see. There we go. Thermal pad still intact. Managed to shave off a part of the clip. I hope that's not going to matter later. I mean, it won't because the New CPU is self-contained with the heatsink and everything, so... All right, well, let's go ahead and remove the CPU. Chip information for those that like that kind of thing. And now... Again, on the overdrive chip for those that want this information. And we just have to make sure that the notch on the CPU here aligns with the notch on the socket, which is right over there. Let me see if I can zoom in. So right here. And... Now 
technically, that should be it. The jumper settings, I believe, will be correct. But let me verify in the uh, manual as well as the owner's guide for the PC. So we should be all set. There's no specific jumper setting for an overdrive CPU, at least not that I can find. If there was any updated information published after the uh, release of the manual, I'm probably not going to be able to find it. So we're just going to go ahead and power it on and see if it works. All right, so I've got everything connected. Again, I left the Sound Blaster card out just, you know, because I want to make sure everything is properly working. So the only card that I have installed is the ATI video card. Yeah, I can go with the onboard video, but I think I'll be fine with that. But let me see if I can get a better camera angle so I can get the screen and the computer in at the same time. I think that's the best I'm going to be able to do for the time being. Fingers crossed. Oh, that fan is loud. We've got a post screen. 180 megahertz. It's working. Yes. There it is right there, and it even identifies itself as an overdrive. Go ahead, and uh, we'll get back into DOS Bench from Phil's computer lab and verify that the CPU is being detected correctly, although, again, it looks like it is. So before we start, I just want to get a closer look at the CPU, and there it is right there. Happily chugging along, that fan is really going crazy, though. That's the sound. Now, it doesn't feel hot or anything like that. I think the fan just runs at that speed all the time. Maybe there's a way to disable it since I do have the case fan right in front, blowing air over. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll do some research first online before I do that. Maybe I can find a better cooling option for it. But anyway, let's go ahead and do check CPU. And it is showing up as a Pentium MMX 180 slash 200 overdrive running at 180 megahertz. I wonder if I do play with the jumpers if I can't overclock at 200. Let's go ahead and check. Well, let's do landmark. I know it's not going to be accurate, but yeah, 46, 267.8 megahertz. Definitely not correct. Let's go ahead though and run speed sys. And I will run a full suite of benchmarks and show you guys the results, of course. In a bit, I just want to make sure everything is working correctly. Yeah, so we're past the penny 133, right there between that and a 233 CPU. Here again, it is detecting it as an MMX 180, say a P55C, which the original Pentium that came with this was a P54C. It is running at 180 megahertz, give or take. It does have MMS, obviously no SSE because that wasn't introduced yet. And it is still running at a 60 megahertz front sight bus with a 3x multiplier. So yeah, so it looks like everything is working so far. Like I said, I'll run an extended suite of benchmarks and show you guys the results. And I don't know, we'll start up Windows 3.1 just to make sure that's working. We have to run the diagnostic software again so that the utility can verify that everything is working correctly. And it will also do a comparison of what the old CPU was capable of, as well as what this new one is. So, All right, now that we have everything installed, let's rerun the benchmarks and see what kind of improvements we get. So we're running the VGA benchmark. It is improved to 138.4. I'd say that's a pretty significant improvement right there. Chris's is at 35.4 frames per second. Modest improvement, but not unexpected. PC player, 17.5. Again, very modest. Doom at max settings. This time I got 1055 real ticks, which results in about 70.79 .79 frames per second. A decent bump. Quake max, not much there. It's only 12.4 frames per second, but again, it's not unexpected. So, but going to speed sys, this is where the real improvements are. L1 cache, 330.31 megabytes per second. L2 is 164.86 megabytes per second. And overall memory throughput is 86.80 megabytes per second. There's some additional tests that it runs for MMX. I'm not going to post them because you can't compare them because there's no number to compare them to. So, all right, with the benchmarks out of the way, let's continue. All right, now we got to run the Intel Overdrive Diagnostic Utility. That is loading off of the GoTech. All right, so 
just continue and continue again. And there it shows before the upgrade and after the upgrade, of course, with all the enhanced features right there. So yeah, a substantial upgrade. Let's go ahead and run through the Everything passed. Let's look at the floating point. Yeah, everything seems fine. And now we can do the MMX test, which I could not do before. Everything looks good there. And finally, and there we go. Now, of course, a uh, MMX CPU is going to be a complete waste on a running in Windows 3.1, probably even a bit in 95. So I might prepare another CF card that's going to have uh, Windows 98 on there because that'll benefit a lot more from it. But we'll see. I'm not quite sure yet what I want to do with it. I do want to do a little bit more testing with some of the DOS games. I know there were a few that supported MMX. I don't know if I have any of those, but you know, we'll take a look and see. So yeah, all in all, I am, you know, happy with everything. The upgrade was worth the price. It was a little more than I wanted to pay, but less than what I've been seeing these go for and definitely less than when they first came out. I tried to find uh, pricing on it and I could not find any for this specific one, but for the, I think it was a, just a regular Pentium 150 megahertz overdrive. I think those are going for $400 or something like that. So this one would have been right around that ballpark, maybe even a little bit more. I'm not sure. I, like I said, I can't find the pricing. But yeah, so what did you guys think of this little upgrade? Hopefully it was a little bit entertaining for you guys. And if you have a Pentium-based system that you're looking to upgrade, keep an eye out for some of these overdrive CPUs. Even uh, an open box one might be a good option as long as it's working, of course. But uh, it will give you a nice little boost. So now you might be thinking, well, why not just build a new system? In fact, didn't you last year go over a Socket 7 motherboard with a 233 megahertz processor with MMX? Yes, I did. That was for a completely different build. This here, because it's basically my childhood PC, I wanted to try to get this upgraded as high as it can go, within reason, of course, too. Like I said, I'd love to really get a Voodoo card in here, but they're just kind of pricey right now. You guys have any experience with overdrive processors? Have you upgraded yours either in the past or more recently? Leave some comments down below. Otherwise, thanks all. I will catch you later.